Hello adventure people, welcome back to another video. As I'm sure most of you know, traveling deep in the wilderness has some inherent risks. For a lot of us, that's actually part of the allure, but we never want to be caught unprepared. So the gear we bring with us needs to serve all of our purposes, especially those that are medical in nature. So a good, well-stocked first aid kit is a vital piece of kit to have on hand. But what's in a good first aid kit? Many of you might not know where to begin, especially for a first aid kit that's oriented towards use in the outdoors. Well, I've brought along my favorite first aid kit that I use while I'm camping. So let's take a look inside. First off, you'll notice that mine is in a good sturdy case. This is a 50 cal ammo can. I use this instead of a canvas or cloth bag because it's going to be much more durable and it's going to stand up to the hard knocks of backcountry travel much better versus a compressible container where your medical supplies are just going to get crushed inside. I also really like that it's compact and square which makes it easy to store in either the car or on the boat and it also comes with several good rugged handles that are very convenient to use. The last and probably most important thing about an ammo can is that it's completely waterproof. I can completely submerge this underwater and my medical supplies will stay dry, which is great because water and medical supplies generally don't mix very well. Another thing that's great about the ammo can is that these have detachable lids. I use the detachable lid as my working surface when I'm prepping my medical supplies because that keeps them clear and free of the grit and just this little elevated lip really helps when the wind is blowing to keep sand from blowing into your sterile supplies as well. I usually put this down on the ground and start prepping my supplies on top. Upon opening the kit, you'll notice I have two things immediately on top. First are a bunch of nitrile gloves. These should be used in really all first aid applications to protect yourself from blood and other body fluids or bodily substances. This is a hemorrhage kit. In here I have gauze and compresses for direct pressure to a wound to stop the bleeding. I also have a military style tourniquet in here in case there's an out of control hemorrhage. These two items are immediately on top because they're usually the first things I'm going to pull out of here or things I'm going to need in a hurry. Notice how both of these items are clearly labeled. Immediately below that, I have several types of bandaging that are going to be applied to a wound once the bleeding is under control. I have a bunch of Kanban of several different sizes. Kanban is short for cohesive bandaging. I also have a couple ACE bandages, which are really nice because they're reusable and they're also very handy for their intended purpose, which is to stabilize a sprained joint. And I also have some occlusive bandages, which is used from the neck to the navel, as the old military saying goes. I also have a packet of band-aids. Uh, these are used for smaller applications, cuts and scrapes. I also have some butterfly bandages, which are nice for treating wounds to the face. I have to give a specific shout out to this stuff. This stuff is Luco tape and it is amazing. It can be used in place of all the bandaging items I just mentioned. And in fact, I use this versus band-aids most of the time, just with a little piece of gauze underneath and then this right on top. The main reason I do that is because of this stuff's waterproof qualities. Once it's stuck to your skin, it almost never comes off, even once it gets wet. This is vital for all first aid kits. I promise you'll love it. Right next to the bandages, I have some items that will be used to clean and sterilize wounds. These are 30 mil syringes for irrigating wounds. These are isopropyl pet pads for cleaning skin and tools. And I have some antibiotic creams like Neosporin. Below the bandaging, I have some tools that are very useful. First, I have a set of just generic scissors. These are very useful for quickly opening bandages or cutting bandages to size. There are many applications for a set of scissors like this. I also have a smaller and much sharper set of scissors. These are actually more used for cutting away skin, dead skin, or cutting away hair, things more along those lines. I also have a classic set of trauma scissors used to cut away clothing rapidly. And I have a couple sets of hemostats. These are usually used for sutures, and while I do have some sutures included in my kit, I don't really recommend lay people 
attempt sutures without the proper training. But I do still recommend you include sets of hemostats in your kit just because they have many, many uses. And of course, no first aid kit is going to be complete without tweezers. Here I have several different configurations. Some are sharper and some are more blunted depending on the use. I do recommend you include some straight needles in your kit just in case you have to lance a blister or an infection or something like that. And of course a scalpel blade is very worth bringing along as well. Next up I have some general items. I like to include a couple padded aluminum splints for stabilizing a joint. I also have several triangular bandages in case I need to tie a sling and a swath. And I have an emergency blanket which is very useful for helping treat a hypothermia victim. Something that's kind of random but I like to include is this attachment for an irrigation syringe that's used for cleaning out one's ears. One time I was sleeping out under the trees and I think a squirrel or something ran over top and a small green seed actually fell into my ear and for the rest of the trip it was quite painful. If I had this along I could have gotten it out. Another thing that I pack along that is very useful is a small hand mirror like this. Uh, this is very useful for digging things out of your own eyes or treating your own face if you need to and no one else is around to help. Uh, this is also an emergency signaling mirror so it has more than one use. While I don't recommend that lay people do sutures, I do usually include a little bit of uh, super glue. Uh, this is very useful for gluing back together small cuts and things like that. It can generally be used in place of sutures. I use this crazy glue stuff because I find it dries fastest. Alright, so the last thing I'm going to talk about from this kit is the drugs that I carry. And you're going to recognize pretty much all of the names because they are all over-the-counter drugs. But in my experience, over-the-counter drugs pack more than enough punch for these applications. First up is good old ibuprofen. This is an anti-inflammatory. It's great for a painkiller. Next we have aspirin. Uh, this is also a painkiller, but it also is a blood thinner, which is nice. I also have an antihistamine like Benadryl. Um, this is great for allergies, um, but it does make people drowsy, so it can actually be a bit of an impromptu sleep aid or also an impromptu anti-anxiety to calm people down. I also have some Tylenol. Uh, this is also a painkiller, but also uh, an effective fever reducer. Um, and I also throw in some Tylenol PMs for sleepy time. I have some NyQuil and DayQuil tablets, which are nice if you happen to get sick or have a cold on a trip and you want to salvage as much time as you can. I have some Pepto-Bismol here. Um, I have the chewable and the tablet form. Uh, these are great for heartburn and stomach upset indigestion. Uh, here I have loperamide, which is an anti-diarrhea and helps with fluid retention uh, so you don't become dehydrated. And so speaking of water retention, one thing you're going to encounter over and over and over in the backcountry is dehydration. So I am always sure to include some propel packets or some form of trace minerals in my first aid kit. I really like these propel packets because they're small and compact. I can take these anywhere but they also have calcium, magnesium, and phosphate in addition to your sodium, potassium, and chloride. So they really pack a punch when you're trying to rehydrate someone quickly. They also taste pretty good too. So there you go guys. That is my complete first aid kit. I highly, highly recommend you go out and build a first aid kit from scratch just like this one because the kits you buy from the store are usually a bunch of gauze, some band-aids, and a pill or two if you're lucky. So they're pretty much useless. And if you build a first aid kit from scratch like this one, it will be much better purposed for a broader range of uses. It will also be customized to you and your needs, which is perfect, and it's also something you can't buy in a store. I also recommend you get a little bit of training, such that you know how to use everything in your first aid kit and you don't end up making an emergency situation worse. Also, it's important to have everything clearly labeled in your kit such that other people can use it. You can't assume it will be just you that is using it all the time. In fact, you may be the patient one day.
If you're overwhelmed and don't know where to begin, I've compiled a checklist for things that I think are vital in an outdoors first aid kit. I've included that in the description down below. Also, this is a larger first aid kit that's more oriented towards car camping, river rafting, or really any purpose where you're not expecting to carry it on your back. If you are interested in a smaller first aid kit that's more oriented towards hiking and backpacking, I've made a video talking about that as well, and I'll include that in the description as well. And lastly, if you got any value out of this video and would like to see more short yet descriptive how-to videos just like this one, please subscribe and hit the bell icon for all notifications. Thanks again for joining. I hope your trails take you far and you stay happy and healthy in our beautiful outdoors.